Andronicus Transmissions on Wolf Spirit Radio, Ever Beyond Radio, and Studio 9 Jam on YouTube. With your host, Jessica Ariel Morocco, featuring JP as the voice of Andronicus. Please visit www.readingsbyrael.com. That's A R A E L. We came from the future. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us today at Answers from the Universe and the Andronicus Transmissions. So uh, I'm just happy to be here. Everything's looking good. I still have my concerns about different things here and there, but, um, you know, just more, you know, the information keeps flowing, and so I keep writing, and here you have it. Um, Some more transmissions from... Andronicus today, we have something from Wyman, from Rodan, who is uh, on kind of sort of in between Rodan and Quasar. And, uh, you know, for those that don't know that, Rodan sort of has different aspects of himself, and they're all kind of collecting together, like in the aspect of uh, Helios. And, uh, of course, we have Midas. And let's see, who else do we have? But, uh, hey, JP, how are you? Hello, my little flower. <laughs> I think that covered everything. Yeah, and you've only, I think we've only, uh, only got four this afternoon. That's right. Four. Yes. And Andronicus, Metis, Rodan, and Wyman. And, uh, Any yeah, we do have guests today. We have, uh, Nick is, has wrote, Nick is always writing these beautiful poems and, you know, is just, quite talented, but uh, every now and then I like him to share what he writes because it's, I think you'll be moved by it. I mean, it's very, usually very heartfelt and, and I know that he spends a lot of time in meditation. So, um, it's always wonderful to hear from Wales. Mm-hmm. Ask him if he and, wants me to read it because, uh, he, he seems to be a bit reticent about appearing in some ways. Oh, he's okay. He needs to get over this. <laughs> <He needs to get laughs> and I think we wouldn't trouble you. Yeah, we I, we wouldn't trouble you with it, but um, we have us. Uh, so we have Nick, we have Ian, and we have Rolf, uh, and they'll be joining us, and we'll just be having some discussions after, uh, you know, af- on the second hour. And also, I want to remind everyone too that this week is the week that I'm on with Viking and uh, the Interstellar Galactic Council. Is it? This so, week? That, is sure? it this week? Let me just see. Oh, hang on. We're on the first. Yes, that, yes. You mentioned it. Yes. No, no, it's correct. That's 13th and the 27th. I'm going to be away, by the way, on the 24th okay. and the 26th. That's the Monday and the Wednesday. Um, okay. Uh, so I won't be available for Max, but I'll be there back by the time, by the round table, presumably on Thursday. So. Okay. Uh, and then someone else son. will be doing... Do you want to pre-record our show, or did um, you... Whatever you'd like to do. You can either have a week off, or we can pre-record the show. Um, it's number 98 this week, isn't it? Um, who have we got? Yes. We've got 98 this week. Next okay. week will be 99. Um, mm-hmm. So it'll actually be the centenary show. Or, well, actually, it's Andronicus's 100th anniversary, but not, not the show itself. Because we, yeah. there are a few extras in between. We had a few loop days. There's a hundred shows. Yeah. So it's, we, we're shows, already at a hundred yeah. shows thereabouts. We've already passed that. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah. so there we go. That's pretty nice. I know. Yeah. Wow. So. Well. So, so it's nice. nice that you're going to visit your son and, and we'll, we'll figure it out. We'll see, you know, what works best for your schedule and, and if we might have to do a pre-recorded show that day, um, if not, there's, like you said, there's a hundred shows or more that we could pick from. But I know some people go back and listen to the archives because they say, oh, I didn't, you know, I didn't know that. Mm. You know, there's just so much information 
that even I forget some of it, and someone brings it up and says, "Yeah, that's true. That that did happen." Yeah, and and it's, it's all on my YouTube channel as well, um, and uh, that's you know that's kind of a bigger a bigger space than it is on on the Wall Spirit archives um, and your own archives. But um, you can't you know you kind of lose count after a while; it becomes a bit of a blur. I mean, yeah. you know, here I am. You know, I I do this two hours a week and that's it and you know aside from doing the youtube that's most of what i'm concentrating on but you're living this and it's like a two-hour window into your world um quite uh quite fascinating well they do visit me and talk to me often and you know i i don't get into the full conversations i mean i do spend time with shiva quite a bit you know doing things that is helpful for the planet and um, actually, this weekend I went to New York, New York City, and oh, you know, every time I go there, um, it's it's exciting but upsetting at the same time. And these people just laying down on the on the sidewalks, homeless. I mean, it just it's it's so sad. And uh, there was one that went out of the way to help me. I thought, you know, I was lost trying to find the the bus I was taking back, and. You know, he was so helpful that, you know, I just gave him some money. And I know people are very, very, you know, have their own views on this. Well, you know, I follow follow my own guidance and whatever, you know, what little I have, I don't mind giving. Um, But it's it's just it's a harsh way to live. And, you know, these are the things that really need to be changed. It really makes a statement about our world that uh, people are there without shelter, without food. The people are there with um, substance abuse problems, and they're not being reached because there's no one there to listen to them. Uh, you know, I know I sound like you know a bleeding heart, you know, individual, but it's it's true. I mean, I I I can't help but feel it, and I can't help but be um, emotionally affected by seeing uh, you know a living soul there, you know, in in the space. Not, not really knowing where they belong. And so, so, a lot of these things have to be remedied. I mean, we're concerned about the galactic, uh, space, which is a trickle down effect into how, how we live here on the planet. And uh, I, I know I'm preaching to the choir to many of you, or many of you, are, you know, feel very, very strongly about these issues. They feel strongly about the environment and homelessness and uh, the inequities of humans in general and how children are being treated. There's so many, so many issues. I am right there with you, and I know that you're there with me as well on this. But uh, let's continue to hold an intention to see this shift, and maybe we can discuss this a little further at the second hour. Dome and anyway. pyramid homes for the homeless in New York. You know, yeah. pyramid, pyramid homes that are sprayed concrete, like, you know, uh, Conrad's been talking about. I know. You, know. you can make a building in a day. You can make a house a day. And if you've got them to work, you can make hundreds of houses in a day. You know, if, you know, the people who are sitting there are just aching to do stuff. You know, wouldn't it be amazing if their dreams could be manifest? You know. Absolutely. But, and, and become amazing. a part of the community instead of an outcast. Yeah. I mean, the, the part that crushes me the most is the look in their eyes. Mm. They're not present. They're here, but they're not here. Physically here, but they're not here. And there's no reason for that. There's such an abundance and excess here in this on this planet, and there's really no reason for any of this. And especially many of them look like they could be, have been involved with the military, which is a really, really sad thing to say for our government. Mm. But anyhow, anyhow, on a lighter note. Meanwhile. Um, and meanwhile, nice. um, I was, yeah. I was, I was standing on the corner and, uh, there was someone dressed as the Incredible Hulk, <laughs> um, Batman, uh, it looked like, uh, some kind of, um, uh, uh, what do you call it? Transformer. Mm-hmm. I think there was another, I'm trying to remember who that was. Maybe, maybe it was Spider-Man. I don't know, but <laughs> of course it caught my eye. <laughs> How could it not? <laughs> exactly. I mean, it's, they, they all wear bright colors as well. So um, did you say, did you have your Wonder Woman T-shirt on as you walked through this, as you wandered the streets of New York? 
I didn't. I was a little distance away. They saw that I was looking, and they actually all walked over to me. No. (laughs) (laughs) And then, of course, I was a little nervous, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Just like, uh (laughs) uh-oh. Well, anyhow. Did they speak to um, you? What what was their story? Why why were they dressed as superheroes in the streets of New York? Yeah, I, I just, you know, I was like, Stuck for words. I, I really didn't know what to say. They wanted to take a picture with me. <laughs> and, uh, I was, a, you know, I, I mean, we are in the city. I was just, I had a quick moment like, all right, I'm going to give you my, give them my phone and someone's going to take off with my phone or something. Exactly. <laughs> I was just like, it was just, I just had one of those moments like, all right. Yeah. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you very much. But <laughs> no. <laughs> the superhero thieves, they convince you that they're superheroes and then they go and yeah. st- nick stuff off you. Uh, I didn't know, you know, it was just like it's something that crossed my mind. Maybe it was a little, you know, uh-huh. thought it was a little sketchy a little yeah. bit for it. But, you know, we'll see. Did, I'll, I'll say this, JP. I don't think they were the real ones. I, That's what, yeah. Because, yeah. you know, if they were the real ones and they stole your phone, that would be really sick, wouldn't it? That, it that would be <laughs> like, that would be the end, end of my belief in anything. I know, I know. Farewell, Marvel Comics, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Oh. So on to more serious things. <laughs> Batman is always my favorite. Uh-huh, uh huh. I don't know why he he does seem to be the perennial. You know, I think they they basically ruined everybody else. You know, Superman is obviously like manic depressive, and, and uh, well, Batman's pretty depressive as well, isn't he? Yeah. yeah so. he, well, he's dark. Yeah. You know. Dark. And for some reason, you know, we all loved Bane. Yeah. Bane was really disturbed. <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't know. <laughs> oh, I wonder if I could... Yeah. Hang on. Does this sound more like Bane? No? No. No. Because uh, <laughs> something, it's, it's something to do with the um, talking into a jar. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, so you're getting a little closer. It's, it's got... It's, it's, it's sort of like this haughtiness. I don't know, it's like this, like, bold... Oh, it's more the, more, more the intonation rather than the yes. effect on the voice. Yeah, it's both. It's actually mm. both. Mm. We need to get like a, a, you know, a, a little snippet of the way he talks and. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, I think and, all I heard was that like there was music behind it. It was very difficult to discern exactly what what the qualities of his voice were. And I haven't seen the movie. I don't watch movies. I haven't got to see the movie for ages. Yeah. Well, we're gonna have to watch some movies. Yeah. Well, that's that's one of the things I really like. And the other thing is Batman doing his uh, go-go dancer or whatever it was in the '60s. <laughs> that that was priceless. Yeah. That was very good. That was good. Yeah. Yes. He always had a dry sense of humor, but it was very good. Mm-hmm. Anyhow. <laughs> so. Anyhow. Where? Back at Wayne Manor. Yes. Hang on. Um, Meanwhile, uh, I think we should go to Rodia. Wayne Manor. I'll talk. <laughs> Stargate, <laughs> Yeah, we need the lightning bolt. I was on a journey floating and flying, flying through the ethers where I discovered a thin space, a pocket universe, and I stepped into it. When I followed through, I saw Quasar on a throne. Hello, Quasar. How are you doing? I have something for you. How did you find me here? I recognize your essence, and I follow you that way. I saw what happened as you began to collect all of your aspects from your expression as Osiris. So tell me about the beings there. It appeared that they held you there. So many dark ones who accessed immortality. It is true. I stayed there far too long. I gave them all a chance to reconcile and contribute goodness to the planet. All insisted that they would help if I made them immortal. Oh, so I did. But they did the opposite of what I requested. You see, this is not what I had anticipated. Nevertheless, it was not honored. So, during the Orion battles, I had been very injured, so I, did I, so I decided to depart from these beings, remove them from the place of authority over humanity, and return to gather my many selves. I expanded my essence and became Quasar as all parts joined to me. So, tell me, you have a missing piece of my essence? Yes, I do. 
It's a powerful particle from the quantum. Let me see that. Hmm. Now I'll be complete. Wonderful. Truly wonderful. Oh, how can I how can I assist you after aiding me in this way? Well, I would like to see more peace here on the planet. Can you remove more who are in power and are not serving others for the better of humanity? We can work on that together. I will call upon you when I'm ready. Until next time. All right, hang on. We seem to have a, a call, so let's just see who that call might be. Hello, caller. Unknown country. Who might this be? Hello. Hello, who's that? You're live on the air, by the yeah, way, almost. Oh, uh, okay. This is Catherine. I just wanted to ask, um, Joanne, what did she see for me? Hello, this is not Joanna's show. It's uh, several <laughs> hours, it's several hours time, my dear. Okay, uh, please call back later. Thank you. Oh, huh, right. Okay. Yeah, we have a job. Call from beyond. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, is that from the unknown, unknown oh, okay. number or from an unknown planet, from an unknown person yeah. <laughs> who wants to talk to a, a host who is currently, yeah. you know, eight hours away. Anyway. Oh, God. I'm going to get, see, this is going to happen all day. I know it. I just know it. Okay. <laughs> so there we are. So there's Quasar. And, um, you, you had a bit of him. Where did you get this, where did you get that quantum particle from there? I just found that I had it in my hands. Don't even, I don't even know. Other than I did visit that, that dark place. Mm. And it was like this, um, cement wall that sort of opened up. And I went inside and I saw these humans that were changed into immortals and they were all very dark. But it was in, it was in Egypt. And so when I went into, uh, and I observed everything there, and I did see that, that that it was Osiris at the time who was holding on, you know, waiting and trying to help and assist them, but they, they just weren't responding very well. And then I observed him become Quasar. So it's interesting that he was Orion before he was Quasar. Hmm. So I wonder if this has to do with that whole thing of um, the, the Seth cutting him up. He becomes many pieces. Like the whole thing with Osiris, oh, yeah. which brought 14. him back to Quasar to be brought back. Yeah, fourteen so. pieces, including his schmeckle, which yeah. was never found. Poor yeah, I fellow. wonder if that was that quantum. Yeah, maybe <laughs> this is, you got his quantum schmeckle, <laughs> a little life spark of <laughs> missing life. Yeah, spark. I'm not going to laugh about it because he hears us, yeah. so I don't want to get him upset. Oh, bless your heart, Ronan. Yeah, like, and and your um, yeah. So, meanwhile, meanwhile, uh, so he was talking about the Orion battles. Um, yeah, and I guess some bad battles there. And he didn't talk about Seth killing him or cutting him up. Mm. It was more of these battles in Orion mm. that took place and probably with the Orion Greys. I think there's an, a larger archetype going on here as well. Um, there is some other being who was cut into many pieces. It's like it's like one of those stories that happens over and over again, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Um, so maybe they're trying to do it to the same person. Uh, who was the other being that I you're thinking of? I can't remember who it was, but it was like it was like the story of Osiris, but in a different place at a different time. I can't remember it now. Anyhow, anyhow, uh, but. The idea of God or, you know, a creator being breaking themselves up into lots of pieces or being broken into pieces is a theme that seems to go throughout history. Right. In, in, in kind of, of a disassembly mythologies. and then reassembly. Yeah. And also thing. that we're all part of this one. You know, when we say we're all part, I we're see. literally, you know, again, and it again goes back to the premier. Prometheus film uh, with the character dissolving himself into the world and again with your blood vessels you know, um, as, as Freya so you know this is the same thing going on like each molecule has has a lot you know it's, it's got a whole life in it 
It's like, yeah. You know, no matter well, how many that's, times that's, you that, can that, cut that, it up. That particle seemed yeah. to have this huge element of power mm. that was that was missing that needed to complete with him. Mm. All right. So the other thing is what, what I heard during during what you were talking about, and, and these people who tried to get immortal. Right. Um, Alex Collier was talking about this character called Astar Sharon. Or Astar Sharon, who becomes the, the Astra, the Ashtar Command. You've heard of this kind of group. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. and, um, the, the, he's an Aldebaran. And I'm wondering if he was one of those beings who Rodan is talking about. Do you know what I'm saying? Who wanted to become immortal. And so gain more powers. And maybe these are part of the, uh, time traveling Nazis as well. Does it have the yeah. same flavor? Yeah, well, if he's from Aldebaran, then he's already an E.T. Yeah. 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 But, the, you know, the Aldebaran tried to step into the royal position last well, uh, a couple weeks ago. Was it last week? And I caught them. And I said, you can't do that. And then, but you know who came in afterwards were Dracos. Hmm. So, you know, you've got to keep... Keep an eye on these things. They're they're all you know trying to assert themselves in one way or another. Yeah, but, but uh, yeah, Ashtar. I had my words with Ashtar here and there. Mm. It's very territorial. Yeah, and then there's this um, Giza intelligence, and this is what I'm also connecting with this Orion group, um, because you know the Giza plateau. That's where the symbol for Orion is. So therefore. It's a, an, it is an Orion base. Because if you put your star system, as you see it, on, on front of it, it could be that the whole pyramid complex underground is an enormous, enormous place. As big mm-hmm. as, you know, you see the three pyramids, right? That, they mm-hmm. represent the three stars of the central belt. So if you then extend that to the, you know, up to Betelgeuse and down to Rigel, that's a very, very large area, you know, tens of miles. And probably underground, there's a base that is under there, right underneath. Well, the Orion Greys are, are very, very um, aggressive and very dangerous group and uh, quite violent. Mm. They also are, you know, manipulative and have been involved with some of our problems on the planet stirring things up and creating wars and battles. Mm. So, uh, yeah, they're, they're quite aggressive. You know, we, we've got a few different types of greats that are here on the planet that we've had to deal with. And, uh, you know, interesting enough, I saw a bunch of Archons ships that I asked to have removed, um, you know, somewhere in, in, you know, the, uh, in the Netherlands. And, uh, it was just, it doesn't make any sense. They're showing up. There are different ones are showing up for here for different reasons. But, uh, still trying, trying to get into things, still trying to, you know, looking for souls and, and seeing what they can take. I'm seeing it less and less, but on occasion, you know, just find a cluster of them. Mm. It's like, what, what is going on here, you know? But, so we, Keep talking and keep clearing and, and see what, what happens next. Mm. Um, but that, let's go to, uh, let's go to Wyman. Speaking of, so we can talk, update about what's going on in the Echo. Okay, let me engage my tree microphone. Okay. Hello, Wyman. It is so good to see you. Tell me, how have you been doing? There seems to be a calmness near the Eka. I see that your friends jumped in to assist. Even two of my branches have been mended. I couldn't be happier. There was a sojourner today who came to speak to me. I believe his name is Andronicus. He is a friend of yours? Yes. I knew I was 
very concerned about, I, I knew, and I was very concerned about the war and the problems you had during the past few months. Uh, can I ask what the two of you talked about? We both talked about you and your strong interest to keep me well. He also asked if the Summer King was still here with you. You seem to have many who are interested in your well-being. It is good, because much is happening around you now. We are beginning to expand for the first time in a very long time. This was not expected. I'm rather excited about it. I believe we are moving into a new era. Look, there is even new growth on old branches. I'm delighted and couldn't be more happy. Do you understand what all of this means? Life goes on. That is wonderful news, Wyman. I always love speaking to you. I must go for now. I think you should visit the Winter Court and see what it looks like. Things have changed for the better there. Maybe the winters are a little less harsh than usual. For well, farewell for now, and see me again soon. It is important. So, uh, Andronicus is going around asking about me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's enough to make you worried. Uh, a sojourner, he called him. Yeah. Journeyman. Somebody who journeys and then stays and then journeys and then stays. He's oh. it's, it's very funny because I don't hear from Andronicus very often. You know, out of all of them, you'd think I'd hear from him most, but I don't. But when he shows up, he makes his, you know, makes a statement. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so, is it time for Andronicus to make his statement? Yes. I'm by the left gate, and I'm observing a seer awaiting a signal from above. Tell me, Suma, you are aware of the many changes that took place? I looked, and there was a desert uh, a location with adobe-like structures that, if observed quickly, they would resemble natural rock formations. Where are you, Andronicus? In a society that no longer exists by the time you and I speak. You said that with sadness. Are you homesick? I'm oh, sorry. Tell so, me more about should it. Should I say that with more sadness? Yes. In a society that no longer exists by the time you and I speak. You said that with sadness. Are you homesick? Tell me more about it. I can arrive there wherever I like and whenever I like, particularly when it's thriving. It's a location where I can be most like myself, and it, remi and it resembles old Andromeda. The beings there. Tell me about them. They are a hybrid species of Alpha Centaurians and Andromedans. This is when I saw you last before Earth. It should look familiar to you. It did, but it seemed more like the southwest of the United States in a way. The ground doesn't have any grass or fields. It has more of a clay earth. Many species prefer this environment where there are limited species and they can have a better feel for what is around them. Where you live now poses many threats and challenges to off-world species. Now, they don't like it there where your humans have heavily populated the length of the landscape. Only a few enjoy the remote land areas of densely populated trees. The primary area of interest is similar to what you just saw, the desert. I don't want to say exactly where this is because it may cause some suspicions, but I will say that it was a wonderful home for me. I keep looking to the clay pots where I found you spinning and weaving fabrics, you and your son working to help others spoke to your neighbors about who you were. Your essence seems, seemed familiar for me 
Int. Your essence seemed familiar to me immediately. I remember an aromatic smell of sweet incense and a herbal beverage much like your chicory brewing. The watering hole had clean, fresh spring waters, and the wells were abundant. You smiled as I walked by and then looked down quietly. It made me pause and uncertain what to say. But I knew I couldn't go any further, so I drew in to see you. You were clearly a hybrid Alpha Centaurian and Andromedan. Your eyes were quite green, and your skin had a shine to it much like the Centaurians. The Andromedans are much more fair in skin tone, and eyes are deeper in tones. I walked up to you to see if you would help me with the task. I had my bootstraps broken and asked if you could fix them. You held the boots and examined how they were made. You are not from around here, stranger. I am not from around here, but I am far from being a stranger. We have known each other for a very long time. That is odd. Why don't I recall any of it? You are serious, and have not confused me with someone else. Oh, no, I'm positive it was you, but in a different body and on another planet. You are still quite lovely, calm, serene, helpful, and kind. That's very nice. Isn't that the way we all should be? Of course. And not all have learned that yet. So, what are you making? It has been a long journey. Can I trouble you with something to eat? Oh, I have some fresh herbs that I've grown in a grain in grain in a pot of water. They are aromatic and good tasting. If you don't mind humble food, you may try some of it if it appeals to your taste. If not, we can find something more to add to it. I'd be grateful to have some. It smells wonderful, and I was drawn to the aroma immediately when I arrived. My stomach lungs for something to nourish my soul a bit. Yes, of course. I won't delay any further. Allow me to pour some of some for you while I get a clay bowl in the back. We also have some freshly baked flatbread. Does that appeal to you also? In a bit of algae water. Oh, I can help with you. Allow me to come and set things up at the table. By the way, there is a general breeze coming through. Do you mind if I open your door a bit? Go right ahead and make yourself comfortable. I'm expecting to hear your stories of travel and when we f- we knew each other before. It will be a very long evening then. I have so much to tell you. So, who is the father of this child and where is your husband? He has gone on a long journey and has been years since I've seen him. I grow lonely for him very much so. He was a good husband, but not sure what he wanted. His name was Theo. My son is Tavor. Tell me your name. My name is Andronicus. What is your name? Leah. That is my given name for my husband. Before then, I had a name common to many people like Delwar Sati. He preferred to call me Leah. Where did your husband go? He was on a war on our sister planet. That made him, it was it was a war on our sister planet that made him want to leave. He said, it, "If we did not protect, we would not be safe." I have heard about him from others. He is very much engaged in that work now. Well, I hope he appreciates who he has as a wife. I know your husband as well from times past. I see you travel alone. Do you also have a wife? No, Leah. No wife for me. I'm a traveler, journeyman as always. I don't have any lodging tonight. Can I stay with you? My neighbor has an extra room where you might find, where you might find to be quite comfortable. As long as I'm near you, that will be fine. I would just like to spend some time with you. There is so much to talk about, and it makes me feel I am amongst an old friend. Very well. I'm not going anywhere, and we don't have much time to talk as I do my daily chores. I will assist you and your neighbor. Andronicus and Leah spoke late into the evening and then went to sleep. Night after night, they talked, and Leah began to remember much of what happened. When the others found out that Leah had a guest, 
Someone sent a message to her husband, Theo, and he arrived home right away. <laughs> Good old Andy. In there. So some, some, somebody, somebody grasped him up. <laughs> but there you go. There you go. That was, so that was, that's the meeting of old friends. Yeah. And do you remember that scene, like, before you, before you were brought back to that one? It's, it has a really weird familiarity to it. And, um, also I knew that I was on Alpha Century. I didn't know I was a hybrid. Hmm. But I, I did know that I was, I was there and, um, very much involved with what was going on there. So, but, but, and, and when I saw the, the scenery, it was sort of looked like something from ancient Sumeria or from the Southwest. You know, kind of that arid hmm. type of, um, I don't know. It was real. But yeah, I mean, there's, there's, it was just strange the way he showed up and then wanted to talk and, um, and then of course, you know, I don't see my husband for years and then he shows up, you know, I think they must have known. Everyone figured that there was, oh, there's a stranger there spending way too much time mm. with your wife. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, anyway. Got, uh, yeah, yeah. Owl <laughs> Andy and, and his, um, his, uh, what's his word? Peccadillos. I think it's peccadillos, isn't it? That's the word. Anyhow. I don't know, I never heard of that word. <laughs> His little peccadillos. Ah, <laughs> uh, we have many, many new words today. Okay. <laughs> Check out the Urban Dictionary, everybody. All right, so, uh, you, you are our final, our Meet final us. communication from many, many of your favorites. Okay. <laughs> Hello, my love. How fair thee, sunlit flower. We have so much to discuss today, but little time. I wonder about you often and how you have found so many places in such small plan, small spans of time. The clock is ticking, my love, and we are not out yet. A few close calls, a few close calls and a treacherous close encounters with some of the most unsavory beasts of the galaxy have arrived to bid you a farewell. Let's not make an issue about it, but hold on a while further to secure our ground. The tree falls and everyone hears about it. The tree almost fell in the ethers. We held it up strong and bold. Nothing can get past us. We are a hearty bunch and it takes a lot more than that to keep us under. Let them dare tread upon our Celtic soil and we'll be waiting to protect. I have seen Zamphir from time to time flying about the upper realms and lower realms. He has been a busy one. And the purple smoke just invigorates me for many time visit ahead. Do you remember the time I came to visit you in my Cockney-style clothing? You were quite surprised. Well, so was I. Another time, another era, you did change a bit, love, but lovely as ever. I see you went into the city this weekend. You found the cluster of the fallen ones beneath the city, I believe. Yes, it's true, Minas. I was in Times Square, standing by a subway entrance and observing the people walking by, and the flashing lights of the billboard caught my attention. It was so much to take in. But out of nowhere, I found myself jump down into the underworld and collide with a few fallen ones just beneath the city, engaging in a battle. And just as I floated downward, a young man walked by me who said, be careful. And when I looked to see who it was, I realized that he was the one they call Babaji. I think he was looking to protect me. I then stud- studied steadied my eyes on what was transpiring and then successfully removed many and came back into myself again. A few minutes later, I descended down the stairs just to go into the train in a normal manner. And um, are you sure that wasn't Zamphir? Midas, I heard the name Babaji when he walked by. I didn't think so, but it is possible they are... Are they one and the same? It is possible, but they are coming from different times and places. Tell me, my love, the prince comes to you in all manner and ways possible. Oh, I'm sure he fancies you now. It is rare to see him so quick to assist. 
You know, it took me eight years to get him to respond to my request to enter Neptune one time. He usually has little regard for my requests. Always mysterious, always elusive and unpredictable. Does he still put you in his pocket like a fairy sprite? Yeah, never mind. I will bury my thoughts in a flask of mead and a nip of gin. Midas, why do things like that bother you? I've had nothing but struggles with Dryden, and now here comes Zamphir looking like the golden child saving the day. He thinks Shiva is pleased with me or his previously wayward son. What should I think beyond that? The prince can do no wrong. <laughs> Meanwhile, I struggle. Honestly, there's no rest for the weary. Zamphir, send me my wings, will you please? Here. Yeah. I'll even dedicate a song for you. Right, okay. One thing at a time. First of all, guitar opening. There we go. Number two, fade up guitar. I have this uh, little echo, you know? Now, I need to reformat the page so I can see it. <laughs> so, Here we go, Shani. So, um, yeah, so where were you with, uh, with Metis? So you, were you um, in New York at that time? Well, he was asking me about what happened, and he's saying that you're going into all these spaces. He must have observed that I was there meeting up with Quasar and, uh, you know, communicating and going into all different locations, but it was really weird because I was just standing there in the corner. And, you know, as I tell people, my soul just sort of does whatever it needs to do. And I I found myself just, you know, spontaneously jumping down and I saw my essence go right down into the ground. And, uh, and then there was uh, a battle that took place. It was very quick. And And it was, you know, they were like fallen angels or something there. So who was fighting against whom? My my higher self, my my soul aspect or something like that just just took off. It like must have picked up that I was uh, there was a vibe of some kind of uh, contrary energy or there was a threat or something, and so I just observed this all happen while I'm standing there on the street corner and I'm looking at the billboards and all these people walking by, and then boom, there it goes. So there was. Something transpired, and it looked like it was um, not too deep, but definitely underneath the city. And a conflict took place, and then um, I came back up when it was completed. Oh. So, battle between um, battle beneath New York. So, we, uh, we've been quite uh, subterranean conversations mm-hmm. today. Uh, there we go. So. It, yeah, it wasn't premeditated. It was like I said, you know, sometimes these things just happen. And I'm standing there as an observer saying, all right, now and there's a part of me that just went somewhere and I need to keep an eye on it. But it was really weird as someone just walked, as soon as I jumped in, this tall guy that looked like he was from India and he, he, he had hair like Babaji. And, you know, he just walked by and as soon as I jumped down in through the, through the, the street, Actually, it was a sidewalk, and uh, he said, be careful, like right at that moment. And then he kept walking. Mm. And, like, I wasn't moving. I was just standing there. So, you know, physically there was no reason for me to be careful. But, And then I said, well, who was that? And then I heard Babaji. Hmm. But but uh, Mita said it, would, it, it was uh, Zampa. Well, I was well. I was wondering if they're one and the same. Mm, perhaps. Which brings up a question, you know, is it possible that Babaji was Zamfir? Kind of fits the whole protocol, and I thought about it because Zamfir is always kind of looks like he's young. He's forever young, and Babaji, you know, he gets older, but mostly he was. He's always seemed to be very, very young. Youthful. Yeah, yeah and. They were wondering who's this boy standing there, you know, by, they found him somewhere. But it, when you look at it from the Zamfir uh, perspective, um, Babaji is very similar. There's a lot of similarities. So, started thinking about it. Mm-hmm. 
I came here not long ago. Left all to help humanity grow. It is me who knew how to play. It was me who was supposed to have saved the day. Then humble forces brought me down, and I had many scuffles with the crown. I said a word or two, indeed. I let the mighty just bleed. I told them fortune never outdoes virtue, but they never listened well to me. So I played a good game and engaged with them wit. They talked a good word, and I said just as I did. Then I followed up with a prediction or two. As time went along, they didn't know what to do. Then Zamfir arrived with his mysterious eyes, and barely spoke a word, and all the kingdom heard. There is something quite rich when you get to be the prince. It makes things quite easier, and one never breaks their pride. So farewell, my good deeds. I shall sunbathe on summer weeds. Eat the scraps from the table, and the outdoors of my private home. I am humble where I roam, and forgive the prince of his deeds. Has fulfilled what he said he would indeed. That would be good with a drum drum beat. Yeah, yeah, yeah that would be. Oh, you could have to re- redo all of it. Just have a whole uh, album of uh, <laughs> like songs. There's, there's, there's like how many? Uh, seventy six, uh, seventy six meters uh, communications, and like yeah. seventy of them at least have got songs in them. I mean, mm-hmm. that's that's like several albums. Oh. <laughs> oh. I, I wonder, you know, I wonder if I've actually ever done the same tune twice. I don't think you have. I, that's interesting to find out. Because yeah. you know, I'm not listening to them. I'm playing them and, like, I forget it. You know, that's it. Uh, the only time I ever get to hear them is when, when I'm uh, editing the uh, the show, which is like I hear about a second of it, and that's it. So it's like it, it passes completely through me, as it were. You know, I, it, there's very little sticks to the sides. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and um, <laughs> so uh, who know, whoever knows, somebody um, maybe uh, maybe somebody could edit up. Uh, I, I, uh, talking of um, editing, you know, uh, Martin's been um, editing the. Uh, he's been clipping out the original Andr- Andronicus transmissions, like one after the other after the other, and it's fantastic to just listen to them all. It's, it really is like listening to the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Uh, episode after episode. So that's all over on the website. Is that correct? Um, I don't know if it's actually been published because um, he's, you know, it's not complete. It's just he's doing, yeah, doing it whenever he can. So maybe it will never complete, but uh, and maybe I'll start uh, looking at releasing some of those. Um, but it's, I mean, it's up to you, really. Um, yeah, well, we can talk about it and, and put a, have a place where people could just go in and start listening to them. Makes it easier for them to not listen through the whole show and just hear the CD. transmissions. We could make a CD that people can, or um, a, uh, a download disc, um, a, a memory stick. You know, you st- yeah, a mm-hmm. memory stick much easier than a CD. You stick it in the computer, and then you've got all of the um, 
all of the episodes, uh, one after the other, or you know, you can search for key- keywords. Maybe I don't know something. To yeah, think about. we've got our centennial coming up. Maybe yeah. We, yeah, I don't know what. Do something. Do mm-hmm. something that that. Um, I'll discuss it with with the crew here yeah. and see what they want to do. Ask them. Yeah. But yeah, but well, we have some music coming up, and also have our guests uh, Nick. We have Rolf and Ian will be joining us in the second hour. Stay tuned in, and we'll be here. Okay. And welcome back, Jessica. All right. Well, we're, we're back, and uh, we're here to, you know, like to introduce uh, Nick, who's going to be reading his poem. Before, before then, I just want to introduce Ian and Rolf. You guys want to say hello? Hi all. Evening to all of you. Hello everyone. Okay, great. And uh, Nick, maybe you can uh, share with me the the poem that you wrote that you had. You had in uh, the the Clindronicus Facebook group. Well, it was written uh, a while ago, and it's basically a reposting. We just just one or two little minor edits. Okay. And um, so this is the poem. It's called, Were You the One the Moonlight Caught? Were you there at the cusp of night when the evening sun cast its last light across the fallen land and ravens sang mournful songs amongst the trees? Were you that shadow that danced amongst the forest and briefly caught the moonlight? Were you the one whom love longed for and failed to touch? And only the icy wings, winds sang through the branches and froze your heart. Now as the dark dr- draws deeper and the rustling of the trees and a mournful cry of owls. O oh night, that is so long, I'll make slow the coming of the day. O oh world, this is how I know you, myself, a passing stranger, walking across fields of stone where grass once lay. A child at heart. But now these aching bones make slow my journey across this barren land. I heard a bird sing upon the coming of the day, a nightingale. I know not where. It sat amongst the many trees. A robin makes its first flight of day, breast red, from the early sun. Sun whose rays warm these cold limbs of mine. O sun, how we waited long hours of dark night and wondered if you would return. A glow, a warmth fills my heart, a hope, a wish, a joy, barely felt, a voice within, softly heard amidst the silence of the early day. With aching limbs, arthritic pain, my steps unsteady from the long night sojourn, but hope is strong incentive to walk again amidst these fields of stone and barren hills once more. Now the journey is near complete, O oh, blessed rest, how I long for thee. But one day more upon this never-ending road that seems to stretch unto all eternity. I who thought love had died, who thought all joy had left the world and grass had turned to sand. My mind, long sunk in negative thoughts, now comes awake in this blessed dawn and rising summer's warmth. My mind, how wrong you were. I greet the day and a stranger walks by. His name is Joy and his companion is Love. They bid, bid me good day and ask I walk with them a while. Now three people on an endless road. Joy, Love and I. We walk into the dawn and the amber light. I know this world will never be the same, for joy and love have returned. And a tear fills my eyes, and I smile, and see the sand and stone turn to green, for the grass has now returned, and my anguish is no more. Okay. Beautiful. Very, very nice. Thank you, Nick. Okay. It's, you know, very, very. You, you should have a collection of your poems. They're very heartfelt. 
So, hello everyone, and, uh, you know, we, we were talking earlier about, um, th- there's always current events, there's always things going on, and, and we're, we're looking at things happening in Europe right now, over in Germany. Um, does anyone want to, uh, bring up and explain a little bit about, uh, their thoughts? Nick? Did you did you have something that you wanted to start off with? Um, but not really. Uh, well, it's hard to say, really. Um, uh, uh, I've not not got a subject. Well, I was talking about particularly uh, what was going on in Germany. I mean, there yeah, are, in we, a, we were discussing this earlier. In, in, in a Germany, uh, uh, rephrasing what what Alex uh, Colley has been saying. <clears throat> the protests are apparently pantomime, according to Alex. Um, they're not to be taken seriously. It's orchestrated, and he says the uh, protesters are busted and they're paid. So basically, they're using paid actors. And um, basically, the violence there, it's um, street theatre with the cooperation of the police. Now, this is according to, to Alex Collier. And... Um, I'm quite happy with that. So I've not followed what's going on in Germany. It, it, to me, it's just a meeting of psychopaths, frankly, and people who just don't care about humanity at all. And um, basically, it's a distraction. I would focus on, uh, as I often say, on firstly balancing your own personality, your emotions, living with each other with compassion, living selflessly, and basically forming groups and working within groups because it's only groups that that will survive and it's groups that are the uh, communities uh, who who will be be the saviour of the planet basically because when the system goes down the two things we have to um, focus on which is communication using um, smartphones and the internet and and also communicating on a person-to-person level and uh, I think these are the issues we should be focusing on, not what's going on at the G20. Rolf, did you want to say anything? Well, I totally agree with, with Nick on what he's saying about, um, you know, focusing on yourself. And I I mean, what Alex Collier said, it rings very true to me. It, it, I mean, it wouldn't be the first time our governments would hire people to set up some some sort of uh, scheme or you know theater act or whatever you want to call it to to distract us from what's really going on. And I mean, yeah, I've I've read so many stories about how people like you know George Soros and stuff are being involved in those kind of games. I mean, yep, I. Uh, it wouldn't surprise me if it were true what Alex was saying. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, it's it's just another another kind of arrangement. Only it's not happening in the U.S. this time. It's happening in Europe. So you wonder, well, what what are these games all about? Why are they go th- going through so many efforts? And what actually was this G20 meeting about? A gathering of world leaders. And what what were they talking about? I mean, is there anything of significance? All the talk, yes, is behind the scenes. What we actually see uh, at these meetings of the G20, uh, the same way with, with any other group of uh, political leaders, or uh, um, call them what you like, psychopaths is a good name. Basically, you're seeing uh, window dressing. The real business goes on behind the scenes, and we will never know what is actually discussed. Um, uh, basically, it's a distraction, and uh, it's uh, yeah, it's plastered all over the mainstream media, which I never watch. I've no television, and uh, I don't read newspapers not nowadays. But uh, basically, it's just uh, street theatre to catch the attention of the public and to distract them from uh, what is really going on and what is about to happen. I think, and uh, and Alex does mention Earth changes again. He's quite adamant that the brown dwarf is coming from behind the sun and and this is going to have a uh, predictable effect upon the earth. It could be quite uh, 
a dramatic. You've only got to look at the earthquakes uh, near, near Yellowstone and uh, and uh, various uh, signs that, uh, that there is an influence affecting the planet right now. And um, basically, we've two things to bear in mind: earth changes and the uh, c- c- collapse of the current economic system. And uh, these two things could happen all at the same time. One thing distracting from the other, you might say. And, uh, you know, these are my feelings at the moment. Yeah. Well, well, I think that, you know, a lot of these things we're trying to avoid, especially like the Brown Dwarf, is some of these bigger problems. I mean, you know, there's always lo- levels of drama. There's always... Um, distractions to hide from actually what is going on we know we know these things are happening here but i think that the the real the, the real threats that we may have any type of natural events or any type of technology that's being used to alter um our planet i mean someone was talking about uh there was some kind of machine that they could subtly create tidal waves right by coasts and, uh, you know, people saying that there's other things going on in the East Coast here in Massachusetts, near Massachusetts and going all the way down to uh, Florida. Uh, I, I, I don't know. Uh, Dabu 77, I think, had some information on that. But, I mean, we, we could go and, and watch YouTubes all the time about YouTube videos and different things that people are finding out, like Fulford and what he said uh, regarding this this thing happening in in Germany, uh, just always keep our eyes and ears open. And if there's any any truth in any of it, we want to be vigilant in taking our intention to avert whatever is happening, to keep a balance and harmony, and keep everyone safe here on the planet. While uh, these uh, the thirst for power and destruction is um, out of control, and we want to subdue their their power forces that they use or manipulations. Can I just come back to this uh, 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 this uh, brown dwarf again, Jess? Um, sure. Um, I've heard two, two, possibly three schools of thoughts with respect to the ETs. One is to uh, have intervention to minimise the effects, possibly create a, a uh, gravity well around it to uh, pull it in off its uh, its uh, current per- uh, per- perihelion to t- t- take it further away from the sun and away from the Earth's orbit. Mm-hmm. Another school of thought by the ETs I've heard, I think Alex might have said this, is to uh, let the Earth changes happen. As it's a, um, it's a natural progression. It's uh, nature itself acting out. And um, basically, I'm wondering if there's a um, dialogue going on amongst the ETs, wondering uh, just exactly what to do in this respect, whether to let the Earth changes uh, take effect or whether to actually really minimise them. Um, I think this is the uh, big, big unknown at the moment. And uh, also, Alex does mention that the uh, the, uh, the space fleet, Solar Warden, the ICC group, International Corporate uh, a con- 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 um will be using their spacecrafts uh, to uh, deflect the asteroids because he says uh, there's a uh, debris field we enter every 150 days. So you imagine how, uh, six months of the year we're going through this enormous debris field, which I believe is a million miles long mm-hmm. uh, behind the deep brown dwarf and on the path in front of it as well, I think. So so basically, um, it's going to be quite an, an interesting situation in, in the coming months. And... Um, these are just uh, some more considerations. And it perhaps I've said too much on this subject now, but... Yeah, I mean, uh, there's a lot we could talk about and the possibilities of, of how we can change things. I mean, I think we've, we've averted quite a few things already. I think uh, with, the, with uh, many of the light workers and people sending out intentions and things that were supposed to happen. I mean, by now we were supposed to all have martial law. I mean, that was predicted last year. And I'm not saying that those people predicted wrongfully. I think we just shifted that reality and moved into another timeline. And so let's continue doing that. You know, highest potential for humanity. Uh, that's the symbols of what we have that we use for the Andronicus transmissions. 
uh, it's something that we can hold on to as as a point of of uh, focus and you know, continue working in that way. Uh, Ian, uh, what are your thoughts? Uh, it's definitely a very interesting situation now, isn't it? Um, I think the G20. Um, I'm kind of chuckling at them trying to uh, all get together and try and uh, and sort out how they can maintain control but give a little bit to keep people happy, knowing that they're waking up now and there's they want to minimise the amount of resistance but maximise their kind of their stranglehold over resources and there's all the inner struggles going on. So that's that's kind of great fun. Um, there's the outside, the protesters, which are, uh, like a lot of it is um, agent provocateurs and kind of state, uh, you know, state paid or or actual agents who are kind of creating the mayhem and almost bringing sympathy to the politicians who want to bring in these these um, kind of controlling policies. Um, so, so I'd like to be a fly on the wall in there. Actually, that could be very amusing. Um, as for the, um, 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 I don't know anything about Alex apart from a, um, a few of his shows. I don't listen to many uh, YouTube videos, so I'm a bit out of the loop. But how I see things is there seems to be two worlds manifesting. There's a like a world of of, um, of hope, optimism, and freedom, and but the the darker element, um, elements know full well that that humans are powerful manifestors and they want to continually drag people into the um, dark ways of thinking and, and almost manifest this world, you know? So, so of course we know that, that what we focus on the most manifests. So so there's these two worlds. So I've heard somewhere as well that there is two worlds. There's one in the former. So so I'm all for keeping an optimistic mindset and and uh, staying kind of uh, kind of light and full of joy in the face of all this apparent mayhem and and chaos and false flags and and all that kind of stuff. Stay on the bright side and not get sucked into this this um, dark formation, uh, this dark planet that's forming. Um, I see that very much as being the um, the separation of densities there, whereby uh, because the truth of movement, like a lot of the truth of movement, is is dark entity led, and it's almost steering you into kind of focusing on these elements. And a lot of these things are being taken care of by by kind of unique souls like yourself, Jessica, and and um, beings that kind of yeah you know, we don't know is there. We don't really have to worry about that. We have to worry about ourselves. It's nice to be informed but not to be inundated you know so so i'm all for, for, for kind of keeping straight and kind of you know being active and wanting changes but at the same time not getting dragged down into the misery of what they want you to believe i agree uh rolf what are your thoughts yeah i, I totally agree with ian well said brother and uh i mean Uh, I don't know. I mean, we we create our own realities, you know. And uh, sometimes I feel like these all these parties, some ET, some of this world, try to use our gift or our ability to create realities, and they try to hack that ability that we possess and use it to create the realities they want. And so I think it's like really important to, uh, like Ian said, uh, uh, keep yourself informed, but not you know drown in all the information and and and, and go with the, the the fear agenda and stuff. But just you know try to create your own, uh, yeah, uh, reality filled with love and and bliss and happiness and, and fun and silliness and. All the stuff, I mean, it's a beautiful world out there and I feel we're all responsible in, 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 you know, creating the world that we, we want to have and we want to see around us. 
That's wonderful. Thank you. And I agree. We, we need to stay positive. But, you know, keep our eyes open. Always keep our eyes open with what's going on out there in the world. And trying to identify, you know, what is true, what isn't true, what's staged. It's, it's, after a while, it starts to become evident. You can kind of see what's going on, what the agendas are. I mean, this is not about rioting and picketing and, and all of that. It's mostly just keeping your eyes focused on on uh, what reality we want to bring into our space. And, you know, people have said, well, this is going on in the U.S., that's going on in the U.S., and it's it's really, you know, as I walk around, I'm not really not seeing it. And I know that they had some news coverage saying that there were riots going on in Boston. And a friend of mine had happened to be in Boston at the time saying she didn't see anything like that. So where's all this information coming from? Why are people believing this? So it's just something that we need to, you know, be open to and to understand. And... Try try to see the bigger scheme in all of this, like this yeah. old uh, divide and conquer game that's being played out. Like in every single NATO country, if something happens, the ma- uh, mainstream media blames the Russians. And mm-hmm. I bet you any money in Russia, it's probably the opposite. If something happens in Russia, probably the Americans or the NATO countries or whatever. And then there's the whole, you know, the Muslims against the Christians and there's so many happening, but you gotta see, try to look uh, at it from a, like a higher perspective. Like see the puppet masters pulling the strings and trying to orchestrate everything to make their own reality uh, come to fruition. And you know, it's it's unnecessary. We don't need their reality. We can create our own. And so yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, uh, well, we, we have so many different things that we could, uh, discuss. And what, what, what is the future of, uh, the royal families? Is they're removing the, the Dracos, they're removing the, the reptilians, uh, the Aldebarans want to step in. Uh, you guys are from Europe. What are your thoughts? Start with, uh, Nick. Uh, <clears throat> well, frankly, um, let's see now. Um, Simon Parks said in his last interview, he said that the the British royal family are in an interesting position. Uh, he says the Queen is going to uh, it, no, they they're going to announce in the media, the BBC probably, that the Queen has passed away, and then they're going to announce that Prince Philip has passed away. And that's they're just waiting to get the timing right. Now, whether the, the, whether they have passed away and they're uh, holding them on ice, so to speak, I don't know. But uh, it looks like the British ro- royal family are in a, a kind of a, a conundrum because they don't know who is going to to um, uh, succeed the Queen. And um, so, so, so basically, what I'm saying, this whole thing about royal families, it's a complete and total. Anachronism. You don't need royal families. You need people sorting out their own lives, working in, in, in communities. You need a fractal society, a fractal based society, holographic society, as Simon uh, says repeatedly. And uh, my understanding, my, my own realization is that this is the way to go forward. Not to have people at the top who uh, the uh, common man is, is meant to look up to. The common man only looks up to himself because it's uh, it's within us, not outside of us, where um, we have to look. Uh, um, so, 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 so basically, these royal families, when the system comes down, the, the royal families and the politicians themselves will be sidelined, quite frankly, and they'll just, uh, like a withered limb, they'll just... Uh, a fall away and uh, people will n- no longer take any notice of them. This is the future of, of, the, of the royal families, I think. But people have to wake up and people have to take responsibility for their own lives. And um, this is the way it's got to go.
Anyone else? Well, I think it's it's similar to the whole um, like the Messiah agenda, like like the whole looking for a savior, looking for someone to to you know take care of you. I think we need to like drop those belief systems and and like Nick uh, said, you know, take control of our own lives and um, uh, look at ourselves as our own savior and, and just. Yeah, take matters back into our own hands. I, I am really confident we can all do it. But, you know, yeah, we need to take those blinders off first. I think uh, what's going to happen, I mean, I keep going on about this, but the system is going to come down mathematically, according to uh, certain pundits. The system has to come down. Uh, you've only got to listen to Bill Holter and, and uh, Greg Manorino and uh, Greg Hunter. Um, the, the, the system is not sustainable. And at some stage, we're going to have a, a societal collapse. And if we have earth changes at the same time, it's going to force people to wake up. Either wake up or go and find a sandpit somewhere and b- bury the damp head, which I think, I think many people are going to. But basically... People are going to have to learn to fend for themselves. They're going to have to grow their own food. They're going to have to help each other. And they're going to have to come out of their own shell. And uh, basically, when the system does go down, it's going to cause a lot of suffering. But it might be the only way that society can evolve. Because it can't evolve when it's in a condition of slavery, which has been in for the past 10,000 years or more, since the fall of Atlantis. And before, probably. So, uh, sorry, Jess, go on. No, no, go finish your thought. I was just going to quote something from the chat. (laughs) My thoughts just go on and on. (laughs) It's also material. But um, uh, basically, people are going to have to have their walking sticks and have their crutches and wheelchairs taken away, metaphorically speaking, and they're going to have to learn to work for themselves. Uh, speaking in metaphor, and uh, it's going to be a very, very painful job for many because uh, uh, most people don't ha- have any money. Mm-hmm. Uh, certainly my acquaintances aren't uh, the richest people on earth by any means, but they're, they're gorgeous people, wonderful people. And um, But uh, uh, basically, you don't need money to survive. Once you have the basics of life, such as energy, and uh, a few a few things, for instance, you don't need money to survive. And people are going to have to learn this lesson, which is why Wing Keach needs to come on the scene as soon as he uh, thinks it's safe to bring his ideas out. Yeah, we should have him on the show sometime, yeah. talking about his, his yeah. idea for uh, the replacement of a monetary system. Mm-hmm. I think it would be quite interesting to have, you know, share his ideas and, and have maybe a, a round table of some sort. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm looking at something in the chat by Tim Gouda who said, I remember Robert Morning Sky venturing something for a, uh, of a prediction in the late 1990s saying Charles would be bypassed for William, but he didn't stand by it. Just speculation and said there would need to be a change in the three major thrones of the world before an attempt uh, to try instilling a new one, uh, new world government. Though I don't think, uh, it'll succeed. So, uh, that, that was an interesting. Thanks for sharing that, Tim Gouda. Does anyone want to, uh, say anything about that? I mean, it's definitely, that's what's happening here. Can I mention mm-hmm. just my take on it? Well, not so much on Tim's point, but, but, but just on the royal family's point. Um, how I see it is, is that, the royal family is basically kind of um, extraterrestrial races using kind of hybrid surrogates to kind of do their bidding. And uh, that's very old school now, isn't it, with with everything that's being ushered in now. So, so they ain't, you know, they ain't going to be around for much longer. And uh, why all these other races want to walk into it, they want to kind of maintain that, that, that fake paradigm that had been set up when when humans were kind of very suggestible. Um, that's crumbling away now, and, and these and these races that have kind of 
bled the planet dry from from resources and loose and God knows what. Um, that's all coming to a stop now, hopefully. And um, <clears throat> so 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 there definitely does need to be as for the as if they can maintain a royal family. I very much doubt it. In uh, I mean the new frequencies, but at the same time, I think I think if you bring in elders to supplement the the obvious um, um, power vacuum, maybe uh, maybe kind of a collective group of elders or something, you know, who can who can take over and, and start to split it up regionally, take the power out of of one person across a country and have have, have kind of um, smaller groups kind of running themselves. I don't know. It's a, it's a tough one, isn't it? Because you've got to break down a whole way of thinking for for a, a lot millennia. Yeah. What's the thing yeah. is, is 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 absolutely vital here, and I think uh, this is what's maybe happening behind the scenes based on Toilet's work and uh, such. But I think the dominant the council uh, is going to have to step in rather fast when the power when the the power vacuum occurs, and I think this is going to be a very, very, very neat bit of footwork on their part, and they're going to have to step in and do some pretty heavy mentoring, but very, very carefully, otherwise they'll scare the blooming hell out of people. But uh, basically, this is what uh, um, various groups are going to have to do, such as ourselves, uh, people who are awake, we're, we're, go, we're going to have to go out there, get our hands dirty, so to speak, and we, we're going to have to act as mentors. And if people don't want to listen to us, fine. If they do, we can tell them a heck, a heck of a lot. And uh, hopefully, they'd be of great help. But basically, it's going to come down to mentoring. And someone has got to set, someone has got to step in just at the right time when the power vacuum occurs. Otherwise, it could be rather Rather tricky if the, yeah. uh, you see what I'm saying, Jess? I, I agree a hundred percent. I mean, I see that spiritually happening. As soon as we clear something, something else steps in and it's, it's like they're waiting, they're waiting in the back, you know, waiting, waiting for an opening. And, you know, you can see that. I mean, uh, you know, you see some of these nations, um, that, you know, that they've had trouble, like, like some of the countries in Africa or some of the Caribbean, uh, nations are like, um, Dominican Republic or Haiti or, you know, you ha- have this, that power vacuum that shows up and then you, you get, you know, some really, you know, really dangerous, very aggressive type of leaders with very extreme ideas. And, you know, I had a discussion with uh, Peter Berger about this before and I said, well, you know, you have these really, really severe, very strong, forceful leaders that have come in through, through time. You know, like Napoleon, like, like Hitler, uh, like Mussolini, and, you know, Franco, and, and so, some of those others, and, you know, Stalin, and, and so forth, and, and he, in the thing that, that we discussed, and I don't want to quote from him exactly, because I don't know what the quote is, but it was essentially this, is that the reason why these rulers come up is because there's problems. There's problems with the economy. There's problems with the government. There's collapsing of things. There's, uh, you know, issue not not enough food. Uh, maybe there's some natural disasters, or there's something else that's happening, and you have this very strong personality that shows up, and I'm here to save the day. And technically, they have a plan. They really do have a plan to help restructure and organize everything. The problem is, is then they go from there and make it into um, a control system. So they don't, they start to restructure and then they start to take over. And so, so what do you do with the scenario? So essentially what you're saying is the people asked for this. They didn't know how to pull it together. The same way as the American government says that, you know, many of the people here are reliant upon the government to provide for them, they they're not working. They claim that there are no jobs. Um, they discourage people from small business or whatever. 
so that you have this whole arrangement where there's a need for the government to step in and then tell us what to do and how to do it and where to get that money, how to survive. And we need to be going in the other direction. Why is it that we need a ruler to do this? So, you know, as Peter mentioned, the people were then at least helped. And they needed, they wouldn't have been helped otherwise. And maybe something worse would have happened to that nation where another government came in and took them over. So it's, it's just, it comes back to the same thing. We need to be more sovereign. We need, need to be more independent. We need to have a plan individually of how to care for ourselves, take care of our families and, and figure out a way that we can, you know, work amongst each other and not so much be dependent on any government group because I know in the future and I've had a glimpse in the future anyone that does not contribute and is sitting around and has no other purpose than than to just you know and, and I'm not saying the people that haven't had hardships and then they're they're in that situation I'm talking about people that are deliberately intentionally saying I don't want to rely on anyone I just want to and we, or I'm relying on this one I don't want to have my own purpose or goal here and a lot of us need to awaken more and understand that we have a greater purpose here. We're not here to live off of these governments, these major infrastructures, but rather to be connected to source, to expand out, and to uh, bring in the community as we know it, because the community is already within us, and then the community is around us. But that does not inc- include big uh, government. So and does anyone want to speak on that? I think there's two points here, Jess, two very important points here. Firstly, people have a distinct lack of self-worth. Secondly, they are unable or more likely unwilling and unpracticed in thinking for themselves. I I spent 20 years learning. And uh, (laughs) I'm not saying how many... how many points I've got like, but it's a, it's a process and it's a, it's a hard process, really. And the people, until the system collapses and collapses to the point where the, the old control systems are no longer in place or are not functioning as they used to, that is when people will have to learn to think for themselves. And I think this is what's going to have to happen. It's a uh, rather brutal. But the old structure has to has to come down. Right. What What do you think, Ian? Um, I'm of the men, um, I'm of the mindset that it um, it's not going to be a sudden drop. Um, I know there's a lot of people talking about a hard drop. Um, I'm I'm very much hoping it's going to be a softer one with an overlay of the financial system. Kind of more uh, more gradual. Um, I don't. I'm. I say I don't see. Um, I'm. I. I'm hoping there won't be any kind of major clati- uh, cataclysms or or um, uh, asteroids hitting the earth and and you know great big uh, you know, kind of great big things like that. I'm hoping it's going to be a, a kind of relatively smooth transition. The guys who are, who, as Nick quite rightly says, you know, they're going to fight hand and tooth to, to, you know, we have to kind of, um, kind of take their hands off of the guns and everything, you know. Um, it's going to be really, um, I think for some people, they're just going to go out with a bank, you know. But, but I'm, I'm all for the, um, a more gradual exit out of that paradigm. And into the new one. <laughs> All right. And, you know, just thinking that's possibilities. So we see this as a terrible thing. Why don't we see it as a positive thing that we can create a new reality for ourselves? There are, there have been models of, of, uh, communities and lifestyles for thousands and thousands of years in this planet. And yeah. most of them were not dependent on a government. Most of them were independently cared for by individuals, but yet the community did oversee and help out. Oh. This is not a new concept. This is an old concept that already worked. Yeah. Don't forget, and, tax was only introduced um, in America, wasn't it, at the turn of the century? 
they they start to tax people. But before that, they were um, kind of uh, Americans never pay tax. But um, well, we had no we we've had tax, but uh, not on everything. And of course, the importing of the tax and the whole the whole Tea Party thing happened in the beginning of our the beginning of, of our nation. Here. But but going back to your point though, I think the very I think the very truth of our essence lies within the heart. You know, the heart is the um, is the indicator and the key. It can get coloured by so many different influences, and and um, it seems that society over the past over a very long time has been geared to close down the heart. So so you have to think with the brain all the time. Um, and this whole whole awakening, I see it as as the way to to start feeling with the heart and start seeing with the heart again. <clears throat> so so I'm sure if people follow their heart and don't get dragged down into all this despair and darkness, um, things will kind of um, organically grow in the right direction. That's a good point. Oh, we're getting some really good ideas here. How about how about you, Ralph? Well, I, I, I mean, I totally agree with what Ian said. Follow your heart. Absolutely. I mean, love is the most powerful thing out there. Literally the most powerful thing out there. And it will co- overcome all. And I, I absolutely, uh, I mean, there, I don't think there's a need for apocalyptic events or, or cataclysms or whatever, because I think it will create an opportunity for the powers that shouldn't be. To step in and, and, and like reclaim their position as, as, uh, you know, uh, creating order out of chaos, uh, stuff like that. We don't need it. I'm all for a, a gradual transition, just like Ian said. And I, if we uh, choose to create our reality together and, and, and in harmony and, and from the heart, then I think, uh, that's a timeline we can create ourselves. Absolutely, and, and and I think I think ultimately bringing hope, bringing hope. We've done it before. We can do it again, and we we really need if we want our if the human human race to thrive, we need to remember that we have compassion for one another, that we are uh, community minded, that we are not here as an island, and but we also have all the answers within. So there's always a solution to every challenge that we have. The challenges just make us stronger. They make us wiser. And we, we're learning. We're learning by observing the world right now. This is this is a lesson for us. I know some people think this is a prison planet. Well, for them, maybe they feel that way. But any type of imprisonment is within yourself anyhow in the first place. And you can check on that. You know, check and see, am I, am I free or liberated from within? But as far as I know, that's not the case. We we still have a chance of uh, doing something new, something different. We don't have to wait for approval. We can just begin doing it. And it's not really anything severe. It's it's not, you know, doing anything other than finding out new ways to uh, support yourself that that um, are not, you know, maybe a little bit off the grid. And, you know, working with nature that exists, living in the moment is something that very few people do. They're always waiting for something else to happen or waiting for someone else to do it. And we really need to take charge of that ourselves and not wait for anybody. But we're waiting for ourselves. We are the answer to what we were looking for, which is kind of like what Rolf was saying earlier about the whole Messiah thing. Why waiting for a Messiah? When we already know our inner truth and we already know what we believe, we know that we're connected to the divine and we have our own interpretation of that. So we also have our own interpretation of what is bliss, what is a good life. And if a good life means all the, everything that's going on in the corporate world and the monetary system, then we understand that's, that's fine for you. It's not fine for all of us. Some of us want to get further away from that, want to live closer to the natural form of living, 
We won't want to have clean air. It's in our inalienable, alienable right to have clean air in this planet, and anyone that is violating that is in huge trouble with with um, the higher forces, with the galactics, with everyone. And we will hold you to it for everything that you're doing to this planet. This planet is a living entity, and it is being violated. And also what is happening with fracking, what's happening with other um, aspects of the planet environmentally uh, being attacked. All of this has to stop and everyone involved will be accountable. So don't think you're getting off or you're thinking it, just because you're in power, you're getting past it. That's not the case. It's all being observed. It's all being accounted for. But we also have the galactics on our side that are looking out for us and and um, have promised and committed to us that we should, you know, be able to enjoy the fruits of the earth, enjoy um, clean air, and be able to bring children into this world and have generations of our families moving forward. And anyone that says that humans are not worth anything, well, you need to check yourself. This is something that will not be overlooked as well. Every single soul has the intrinsic value of the divine. And that soul that I saw laying on the sidewalks in the city of New York City and any other major city in this nation around the world, each one of them is an aspect of the divine. You don't know who you are talking to. And some of the most humble people on this planet could be the very one that you've been looking for could be the very one that has the keys to certain wisdoms. And you should really consider to not be so caught up with who is famous, who isn't famous. We are all equal. We all came in the same way. We all go out the same way. And it doesn't matter with elitism if they you know, have another special form that they're going to think they're going to come back to life or whatever. The soul, it will not be the same. If you try to do things that are different, it will not be the same in the end. So there's no way of cheating. There's no way out. Everything has a, has um, an, a sense of accountability. And why do we speak about these things? To encourage each other. We're here to encourage each other. In the areas where I'm weak, others are strong. In the areas that I'm strong, I'm here to support and help. And this is what we're doing we're here to support and help each and every one of us. We've got only a few minutes left. Does anyone want to say um, last words? Just just a minute each. I just to, um, just a really quick uh, wrap up in um, three words. Just backing up what you just just said, Jessica. Uh, follow your bliss, as you said. You know, really important word. Go with what you. Know, Art seems for. No, it sounds kind of trivial and uh, not workable in a modern society, but, but that modern society is uh, is kind of starting to refigure, and it's all about following the heart now. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Ian. Ralph. Yeah, I totally agree. And uh, strong words, Jessica. I like it. And. Um, you know, just just go from the heart. I mean, say hi to someone you walk past on the street. I mean, you know, uh, I don't know, pet a dog, hug a tree, do whatever you feel like you, makes you smile, sing a song. Uh, you know, <laughs> don't worry, be happy, and all will be well. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you, uh, Nick. You can just say goodbye. We have, we're less than a minute. And I just want to say everyone, thank you. We will, uh, see you next week. Remember the, the Galactic Council on Thursday. Thank you.